First thing to understand about lyre birds, amazing knobs, simply that they're velocity sensitive. Left click on this standard knob and look how slowly it reacts. If I move my mouse slowly, but short, quick bursts with the mouse, and you can cover the entire range. The next thing to catch on about them, I think, is that they combine a lot of features that in uh, regular factory reactor blocks are s separated. So if we take a look at a standard representative reactor block, we see that if we raise the values on a knob, there's a blinking meter here. Well, the same thing is going on here in the sense that there's a meter on every knob that's got some activity going on behind it, and that's what these little red uh, half circles are about. Uh, in some cases, you can see it's a red on top, blue on the bottom, meaning some kind of bipolar activity. Also, on our standard reactor block, there's the modulator buttons. You can see that the A here is active, it's changing. Once we click on one of these buttons, we'll see a field appear a lozenge shape slider actually that applies the modulator to the, the knob that it's next to and we can raise it lower it or send it to the right send it to the left and the same thing is going on over here except that instead of a and b we've got one through eight so these numbers are the same as these letters. Above the numbers we see a knob and some of them are flashing in exactly the same way that, that these are flashing. So in this case the, the meter has been separated from the button and put on another knob and that's because the, the knobs above the buttons can act as uh, attenuators or mixers at the structure level, you'll notice that each of these sources has an input. If you hook up another modulator to the source, say source 1, source 1 here, you'll notice another uh, meter appears next to the number. And you can blend between them with this knob. If there's nothing hooked up here, then you're blending between the original source and nothing. If you click on any of these numbers, just as clicking over here triggers the appearance of this lozenge shaped slider, clicking here triggers the appearance of a circular slider, which is centered on the middle of every knob that, it, that can be modulated. We know we can change the position of the knob with a standard left click, we can change the modulator with a right click. Notice that I'm changing that field just as I would over here on a standard on a standard block, except that also this is velocity sensitive so that a very quick short stroke takes it to maximum and a very long slow progress will bring it down uh, slowly and precisely if that's what you're after. If you decide you actually would like to get rid of it, you, you can double right click to center it out to bring it back to uh, no modulation at all. Once you set a modulation amount and click away from the button, you'll notice that in the center of the button that you've adjusted, there's three indicators. One is simply the, the standard indicator that, that all knobs have showing where you've set it with the mouse. But because there's a modulator also in there, the, the indicator has gotten smaller and another one has appeared showing exactly where the modulation is taking place. You notice also there's a little white wedge-shaped indicator telling you which of these various eight mod sources is actually doing the modulation. You basically have to think of the knob as divided into eight slices, four on the left and four on the right, 
and they go from one to eight around the knob. And so the wedge that appears here is the fourth one up the left hand side. Double right click there to get rid of it and switch say to uh, number three here where we see a different pattern of motion there. Switch to three and jack that up all the way. Then unswitch it, we'll see that there's a different wedge highlighted. If we, uh, number three, it's three wedges up from the bottom. And if we add four back to it, we'll see that there's two wedges together. We can fill the entire knob with wedges if we so desire. In practice, with your eyes on the knob you're curious about, clicking across the options, you'll get eventually to one where you can see that the center slider is not zeroed out. And if you want to change it or get rid of it, of course, double right click and away it goes. But there's two on this one, so we can, and we can see that because it's the outer indicator is still moving around. So come to the next one, there it is. Double right click, we'll get rid of it. The next thing to catch on to is that there are a variety of different types of knobs. Most knobs are unipolar, continuous, zero to one. However, any knob that's got multiple white dots around the perimeter is actually a switch rather than a continuous knob. As there's five indicators, five positions. If there's two indicators, two position. There are also knobs that seem to be white on one side and black on the other. These are bipolar knobs where the center position is uh, zero or uh, default neutral and it goes down to the left, up to the right. And you can center it quite easily visually by seeing how the, the indicator comes up like a black and white indicator when it's centered on the split there. But these knobs have the same uh, features once they're uh, modulated and the wedges appear in the normal way. So obviously a lot going on in a very tiny space there. Zoom is your friend. All right, now let's get to grips with the function of a few of these knobs. There's too many to cover immediately, but the first ones you need to really get a handle on are these four G source knobs for the main uh, and most standard modulators. The G source means gate source. And what they these tell you is what is coming in to tell e each of these sources when to make their next move. It's pretty obvious with the sequencer that you need uh, you need to know what's going to make it go from step to step. And with the, an envelope, what's going to make it step through its its stages? A little trickier to catch on with what is going to make the LFO start rolling. The knob here is already showing some activity, and uh, so what's making that happen? Same thing with the random. What's why is the uh, is there an off button for the random? If we roll over the the knobs, we can see how they're set up here. The sequencer is set to off. The other knobs in that same position, our, uh, the setting is to self. So what self means is that these modulators are basically triggering themselves. The reason the envelope isn't actually doing anything right now is because there's a second switch for it, which controls what mode the envelope is in. It goes from off to one shot. And there we see some motion. If we switch this to Share, the next step up for, for all the knobs, the next one up is share. What we're doing is connecting the shared gate down here, which in, in this example is hooked up to the note in block. Now the envelope is being triggered by a MIDI notes in. When we hit our MIDI key, we see uh, activity on the sustain button because of, we're in sustain mode here and we're hearing a sound not because the envelope is set this way but but because it's set this way and it's also the modulator for 
the level knobs for each of the two oscillators. So if we click on two for envelope to see what two is controlling, the first thing we'll see here that the sliders for the level knobs are jacked up all the way. So if we were to double right click on these, Everything's working the same as far as the envelope is concerned, but it's not doing the volume, so we're hearing nothing. Let's get that back again. Okay, so say we wanted something else besides the our note it's to trigger the envelope. If we go back to self, if we switch the envelope to one shot, Now it's self-triggering, and each time it triggers, it runs through the, uh, the, the three options. So we can adjust those options with the knobs. And of course, we can modulate these, add a little randomness. The next source for all of these knobs, the third one up, is external. And what that means is that each of these four gate sources has an external import dedicated to it. We could hook in a clock source. So once again, the sustain knob doesn't do anything in sustain mode. Everything is determined now by the rate of the gate, the external gate, and the shape of the attack and decay. 